Hello dear students. So in continuation to our discussion in the last class we have discussed what is an acoustic wave and how we can get uh, omega versus k for an acoustic wave. So the point is we have realized that the type of wave which propagates through the plasma in the absence of any collisions is nothing but an acoustic wave which has a velocity or let us say we, we call Vp is square root of gamma p naught by rho naught. So in this class we will try to understand what is an ion acoustic wave and how we can get the dispersion relation for that. So the topic is ion acoustic wave. So it has been found that the ions can transmit vibration when they are vibrating because of the pressure perturbation. They can transmit vibration in the absence of any collisions because of their charge. So in the earlier picture we have made the collision terms m n uh, u minus u naught by tau to be 0, but in the absence of collisions also there is a possibility that the ions can transmit the vibration by the virtue of their charge because they have they have some charge right. So the interaction happens in the presence of an electric field. So electric field is generated because of their charge right. Since the ions are heavier we can still say that the resulting waves will be very slow frequency oscillations. So they, the frequency of oscillations is, is considered to be small because of the heavier mass of ions. We will still confine ourselves to the no magnetic field situation and we will also assume that the number of electrons will be always equal to the number of ions. So the two equations that we require are we can write so do ni by do t plus del dot ni ui is equal to 0. So let us say this is equation number 1 and for the ions we can write the momentum equation as rho i the density of of ions times dou ui by dou t plus ui dot del times ui is equals to qi ni ei minus del p. So we still have this pressure force term on the right hand side, but in addition to that we have now introduced the force due to the electric field. Where is this electric field getting created? This is representing the charge of ions or we, are, we have assumed that the vibration of the ions, the information about the vibration of ions is well preserved or well represented by the electric field. So we know that del p or is gamma p del n by n or using p is equals to n kbt you can use p is equals to n kbt we can write del p as gamma kbt del n. So depending on ions you can use ion temperature or for electrons you can use the electron temperature. So we can rewrite the equation for the ions as rho i times dou ui by dou t plus ui dot del times ui. is equals to q n i e minus gamma k b t i delta n. Okay. So we can write the electric field E as the gradient of the potential. We know this very well, right. So what have I done? I have just written the two equations which are relevant, the continuity equation and the momentum equation. I have rewritten delta p so that it represents temperature as well and the variation in the number density of the charge.
charged particles del n and T i and then I am trying to write the electric field in the units of a potential. Right. So, we can simply uh, write it as rho i Let us say we call this form of the equation as equation number 2, both are same but in written in terms of parameters that we are going to use it. So, we can write a similar expression or similar equation for the electrons which is m e n e times dou u e by dou t plus del dot u e times u e is equals to minus e n e del phi minus gamma k b t e del m. So, for very sm small or very slow ion vibration the electron mass can be regarded as 0. What does it mean? It means the electron inertia, the mass of electron is very small in comparison to the ions, ions themselves are moving very slow. So, we can neglect the electron inertia and we can also neglect the advection term which has a second order velocity in it. Right? So, we can make this to be equal to 0 and we can also make this to be equal to 0. So, in that case what we will be left with is E n e del phi minus gamma k b t e del n is equal to 0. Right. Now, for slow uh, ion waves, the electrons move very fast and they equalize the temperature among the entire plasma. Thereby, you have an isothermal picture and if it is an isothermal picture, you can take the gamma e or the ratio of specific heats to be gamma e to be equal to 1. When is this valid? This is valid only when you have a perfectly isothermal condition or the environment. The assumption is the electrons because of their small mass they will move around and they will uh, equalize the temperature, they, they will bring the temperature into an equilibrium. right? And if we consider only one dimensional case we can write E n e dou phi by dou x is equals to k b t e dou n e by dou x e dou phi by dou x is equals to k b t e by n e dou n e by dou x. And if we integrate both sides, integrating both sides, we can write E phi integrate with respect to x, E phi is k b t ln n e plus c. Right. So, we are now getting a form of the potential that we uh, that is responsible for the electric field. Now, let us say at equilibrium situation at equilibrium we impose that n e is equals to n naught and without any vibration and at equilibrium or at the beginning let us say without any vibration. So, when things were not set into motion without any vibration we can simply write the phi is equal to 0. So, these can be these two conditions can be considered as the initial conditions for, for the plasma. In that case we can write putting these two things back into the equation we can write 
we can get the value of c which is equal to k b t ln n not the unequal the undisturbed number density is equal to minus c substituting this back into the back into this equation so we call this as uh, this is sorry this is 3 and this is 4 so substituting the value of c substituting the value of constant c into equation number 4 what we will get is e phi is equals to k b t e ln n e minus k b t e ln n naught or e phi is k b t e ln n e by n naught or we can write n e is n naught exponential e phi by k b t e. This expression of course looks familiar right. So, this expression says that the electrons are distributed according to the Maxwell's distribution. So, Maxwell distribution is imposed onto the electrons. So, if, if everything that we have considered all the assumptions that we have considered if all of them were to be true then the electrons have to be distributed according to this distribution function which is the Maxwell distribution function. Now, we will make one more assumption saying that the perturbations to be very small relative to the thermal energy just to keep things simple. So, perturbations uh, or the potential that comes out because of the perturbations is very small in comparison to the thermal energy that is there inside the plasma. So, in that case, so this uh, numerator E phi becomes very small in comparison to KBTE. So, we can write the exponential or expand the exponential just so that only the first two terms matter to us. So, N E is N naught will be approximately equal to N E is equal to N naught into 1 plus E phi by K B T. What does this mean? Just look back into what we have done. We have taken the ion momentum equation and we have uh, made the mass of the ion negligibly small in comparison to the mass of ion. So, we, we can neglect this term and it will, it will be sufficient to say this, but still the velocity, the second order term velocity term is also neglected. And so, we have all the right hand side becoming equal to 0, which gives a, an idea that how we can evaluate del phi out of this. So, this equation, if it has to be true, we will say that the electrons are moving randomly or with uh, along the around the plasma and they are uh, bringing the temperature to, to an equilibrium value. So, that means that we have an isothermal condition, constant temperature condition, isothermal condition imposes gamma E to be 1 using that we can get a form in which the potential can be written. So, we have this constant C and in order to evaluate the value of that constant, we consider equilibrium at equilibrium N E, the number of electrons is equal to the number equilibrium value of N naught and in the absence of any vibrations because the vibrations are the ones in which the information about the electric field constituted by ions is transmitted. So, by the virtue of its charge because there is charge. So, this information is transmitted. So, if without any vibration we will say that this electric field which is constituted out of potential will automatically become 0. So, phi is taken to be 0 and when you take phi to be 0 you write this k b t e ln n naught is equal to c and substituting the value of c back into this equation number 4 we get this. We get this. So, this will give you an empirical expression for phi which is KBTE ln NE by N0. So, the, thereby NE can be written to be N0 times exponential E phi by KBT, which says that the distribution that the electrons are following is Maxwellian in nature. And to simplify things further, we say that the potential that is there 
is very small in comparison to the thermal energy. That means, if the potential is being used for to accelerate the electrons across this potential, they will not gain much energy in comparison to the thermal energy that they possess already. So, in that case, the exponential can be truncated to the first two values, which is n naught into 1 plus E phi by kBTE. Right. Now, let us say uh, the perturbation electron density is also equal to the perturbation in ion density. Where is the where is the perturbation actually coming into picture? The perturbation is coming into picture because we want a certain type of wave activity to happen. So, if the ions are vibrating around their mean positions just so that they can transmit a pressure pattern, pressure pattern through them. Then let us say if we consider a simple case, how the pressure is being transported, how the pressure fluctuation is being transported. So, we can consider a fluid inside a tube let us say and we fix a diaphragm at the end. What is the diaphragm? This diaphragm is able to oscillate back and forth. Okay. Now, let us say if the diaphragm is pushed inside, what happens to the fluid? The fluid is pushed in like this. Right. Now, if the diaphragm after a period of time or immediately when, when, it, when it kinds of comes back, the diaphragm is extending out like this. So, now the fluid is being pulled here outside or outward. right? So, what is happening in this picture? So, as the time progresses, as the diaphragm is vibrating back and forth, we can see that let us say after a certain point of time, the, the diaphragm is extending out, then we can see that the molecular vibrations effectively transport a pattern of high and low pressures inside the fluid. So, this is so this is obviously a high pressure and this is obviously when they are extending outside you have a low pressure. Right. So, as the time progresses what are the molecules? The molecules are just vibrating around their main positions. They are not being transported directly into the into the column of this tube because you are not supplying any gas in, inside. So, you are just vibrating it, vibrating the diaphragm. So, while it vibrates, alternate patterns of high pressure and low pressure are being transported into the into the fluid column right, like this. So, this pattern is simply a pressure fluctuation which is being transported into the fluid. So, this is what I was talking about. Now, we will say that the perturbation because you consider the mean position, the electrons, the electron density or the ion density will vary for a uh, for a moment due to this vibrations, right. So, this will make an assumption that the perturbation, perturbed ion density and the perturbed electron density are equal in number. So, they will say that N E is N naught plus N 1, right. This is how you, we write it, okay. Now, for the N one electron let us say is N E minus N naught, right. But we know that N naught, N E, we know that N E is N naught plus N naught E phi by K B T, we have a minus N naught. What am I using? I am using this. You see this? This is the N E. I am using this N E into this equation as this minus n naught as it is. So, we can write n 1 e the perturbed electron density as simply n naught e phi by k b t. Now, interestingly we see that the perturbed electron density is a function of this potential phi. Let us say we say that n 1 e because we said perturbation in electron density is equal to the perturbation in ion density. So, we make it equal to N 1 i. This is because of this simple assumption perturbation in electron density is equal to 
perturbation in ion density fine. So, as a result what do we have? We have a very important uh, equality which is N 1 E is equals to N 1 I. Let us see how we use it. Okay. Now, we have established the basic equations that we require and also the variables which we think will be perturbed due to the wave activity. So, we, we write the perturbed variables as N as N naught plus N 1 without using the suffixes for electron and ion and U is U naught plus U 1 and phi is equals to phi naught plus phi 1. Okay. Now, we will consider neutral plasma which is in equilibrium. which is in equilibrium, which imposes the fact that u is equal to 0 to begin with and phi is equal to 0 to begin with the initial values basically and delta n naught is 0. And since we are using the linear perturbation theory, we can simply write dou n naught by dou t is equal to dou u naught by dou t is equal to dou phi by dou t is equal to 0 all the initial values are constants in time. So, we do not have to uh, worry about them when we linearize the equations. Right. So, so, now substituting these perturbations into the ion momentum equation and the ion continuity equation. So, substituting let us say we call this as equation set A. substituting equations at A in ion momentum and continuity equations. So, I am writing all these things because it will it will develop a sense of continuity and it will be easy for you to flow edit here. It will be easy for you to follow the algebra that I am doing. Right. So, we will write dou n 1 i divided by dou t plus del dot n 0 plus n 1 i times u 0 plus u 1 i is equal to 0. This is the continuity equation for ions. Okay. If we expand it, we will write dou n 1 i. I have already made one term 0 before I write this and del dot n naught u naught n naught u 1 i n i 1 u naught n 1 i or u 1 i is equal to 0. n 1 i or n i 1 both of them are same. So, this term n naught u naught uh, which is a product of equilibrium terms of course, can be made to be 0, we do not we do not want that and this one is this one, yeah this one is a second order term in perturbation. So, it has to be 0 and n 1 i perturbation term multiplied by an equilibrium velocity and we have considered the initial velocity to be 0. So, we have to make it 0. Right. So, you see this, this condition is being used here. The initial velocity u naught is 0 Then things are not set into motion. Okay. So, using this in combination, we can write, we can now write. We have only one term out of the four terms that are appearing 
in the right hand side of the continuity equation or the second term in the of the continuity equation n not u i 1 okay we will write dou n 1 i by dou t plus n not times del dot u 1 i is equal to 0. So, what is the equation number here? Equation we have used this let us say we call this as 5 and this is equation number 6. Okay, so, we will continue this class by applying the perturbation into the ion momentum equation in the next class.